Anyways, today again I am out here in the woods trying to collect some firewood. But today I decided not to exert myself too much on chopping wood. Instead, I am going to collect an abundant source of fuel that I could find here in this forest, which is this. These are the barks of the big sequoia trees and redwood trees and they are extremely light and they have fallen all over from the trees that are that are shedding their bark as you can see this tree has virtually no bark all that bark has fallen down here and I'm going to simply collect that there's lots of it all over so I'm going to reduce my effort on chopping wood instead focusing on collecting it and tying it up in a nice fire bundle. Well, today's activity can be called a wood gathering activity instead of wood chopping activity. As you can see, I have collected a huge amount of wood for tonight. All of this wood was just lying around. Anyway, so today I have prepared my fire starter with lots of pine needles and mixed with uh, some of the shells like these, the bark shells. So that will get the medium fire going and once that fire gets going then I will add the real, the real wood to the fire. This is Dan, my camping neighbor. He is uh, riding from west coast to east coast on his bicycle and he's stuck here for a day because of the fire in the Yosemite and let's see hopefully tomorrow the roads will open up and he will be able to go so I just gave Dan a ride <laughs> down from uh, the campsite and unfortunately the road is still closed so Dan is just putting back all the gear on his bicycle all right there he goes all the way to Pennsylvania so I'm taking the detour route 49 to go from the North Yosemite Valley to the South Yosemite Valley and it's been a, a curvy road with a very uh, slow drive here but some of the scenery here is very beautiful as you can see there is a river and there is a bridge and uh, the road is extremely curvy uh, you can see the road over there, how curvy it is. So, it's an interesting place. Uh, it just is going to take a lot of time to reach where I'm going to go. So, this is the vista from the tunnel viewpoint. And you can see most of the major uh, rock structures here. And the smoke has uh, kind of grayed out. Uh, the valley from tunnel viewpoint I'm going on a 1.6 mile hike to a place called Inspiration Point the trail is fairly steep and my, I'm just getting my heart acclimated to the fact of the height the, the smoke in the air and I'm just gonna take it slow until my body gets adjusted. Well, after first quarter of a mile, my body got adjusted fairly good to this to this slope. Now I can just keep on going at this steady pace, and uh, the heart manages to pump enough blood. So here I am at the top of the inspiration point um, looks like there is absolutely nobody out here it's just me all the 1.3 miles that I 
walk today uh, was easy, but there was no soul in sight. There is a snake there. You can see it just like I heard some movement on the side and I saw the snake there. It's not moving but you can see the stripes of the snake. I'm gonna take a picture of it too. Anyway, the snake hasn't moved since I stopped here to photograph it. I took a still shot and I'm still videoing and talking but the snake is not moving at all. Pretty interesting. Today is my longest hike of my trip here in Yosemite. Um, I was gonna start at 6 o'clock but uh, I didn't feel like waking up that early. So here I am at the base of uh, the trails at 8 o'clock. And I'm gonna see how far I can actually go. Uh, maybe I won't be able to go all the way to the half dome but I will certainly try it. I'm purposely not carrying too much water, <clears throat> only two liters of bottle, though people recommend that you do carry four liters of water, but I do have my chlorine tablets, so I will see if uh, I can find water on the way and purify the water. If I could do that, that will be much better. I'm just going to give it a shot and see if I can make it all the way to Half Dome. It's quite late actually. People who start at 6 o'clock in the morning usually come back by 5 o'clock in the evening. And uh, it's a long, long hike. I don't know if I'm uh, ready for it. Maybe I don't have enough stamina. I don't know. But I'm going to give it a shot. So for today's hike, I have removed quite a bit of extra weight from my waist pack. I'm carrying the bare essentials, the food which is some beef jerky and some uh, candy to keep the levels high, a full box of propel powder to give me the electrolytes I'm gonna need and I removed all the other survival stuff that I had in there, the heavy knife and all the things like that which I'm not gonna need today. So this is just at the base of the trail. This is where the trails are going to start. And I'm here just looking at the Merced River as it flows through Yosemite Valley. It's a, it's a nice place. So this is the start of the trail I'm going to take. And it's uh, near Curry Village across the bridge that I came on just now. And it's a long, long trail that I'm going to go. Alright, so this trail has picked up some gradient now and I can see that I've come quite a bit higher and I can see the water from the river flowing down there all around. You can hear the beautiful sound of the streams so I'm, I'll keep going up, up this way. As I go up the trail, and this is a continuously uphill trail, even when I get tired like this, instead of stopping, I just slow down my pace so that my heart still adjusts. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty good long, long trail, like 8.2 miles one way, which is longer than. Uh, south rim of Grand Canyon. The Bright Angel Trail is 7.5 miles whereas this trail is 8.2 miles and it's all uphill. As I'm going up the trail I see lots of beautiful streams flowing the Merced River. There's a waterfall up there. The trail is actually quite well shaded there isn't any direct sun yet, so I'm having a good time. <laughs> 